Campus and I'm Preeti presenting Tracking COVID-19, a special edition we get for you each day that acquaints you with all the developments on the pandemic. The deadly virus continues to stare at a hapless world. The cases are still spiraling domestically and globally. But the Indian government's biggest evacuation exercise, Vande Bharat Mission, continues bringing back Indian nationals from foreign shores struck by the deadly virus. We get your details of this, also inputs from our reporters, international developments on COVID-19 and words of wisdom coming in from doctors which help you keep safe in these times. Stay with us for the next half an hour. We begin with the headlines first. Indian Navy's INS Jalashwa reaches Kochi with 698 Indian nationals stranded in Malay under Operation Samudra Setu. India's massive evacuation mission, Vande Bharat, continues. Flights including from London, Kuala Lumpur, Muscat and Kuwait bring, bringing back stranded citizens reach India. Cabinet Secretary to interact with all states and union territories through video conferencing, likely to seek states' views on easing lockdown regulations and the need for stringent measures in containment zones. Central teams to visit 10 states including Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab and West Bengal to further assist in the fight against COVID-19. PIB quashes rumours claiming special trains from Uttarakhand to bring back migrants. <music> Delhi police denies claim of audio clip tampering in the case against Marker's head. Nineteen thousand three hundred fifty seven patients recover from COVID nineteen infection in the country. Active cases reach forty one thousand four hundred seventy two, two thousand hundred and nine casualties so far. Globally, COVID nineteen confirmed cases cross forty lakh twenty four thousand, deaths cross two lakh seventy nine thousand mark. United States is the worst corona-affected country in the world with 78,792 deaths. As Spain's death, daily death toll from COVID-19 falls to its second lowest since mid-March. The country all set to ease lockdown from Monday. All right, those are the top stories. We'll first take a, a look at the stock of developments in India in our segment, Ground Zero. INS Jalashwa carrying 698 Indian nationals from Maldives, capital Malay, today arrived in Kochi in Kerala. The evacuation is part of Indian government's program to evacuate Indians stranded abroad. The program, named Samudra Setu by the Indian Navy, entails to bring back around 2,000 Indians in four ships from Maldives. As part of Samudra Setu program under Vande Bharat Mission, the second ship of Indian Navy, INS Magar, will leave for Kochi today carrying around 200 Indian nationals from Maldives. The evacuation is part of Indian government's program to evacuate Indians stranded abroad. The program named Samudra Setu by Indian Navy entails to bring back around 2,000 Indians in four ships from Maldives. Now this is Indian Navy's first massive evacuation exercise during the COVID-19 lockdown. And Ajay Joy is joining us from Kerala to get us more on that. Ajay, we've told our viewers how uh, Samadra Setu under Vande Bharat Mission is uh, progressing. And also uh, the second ship, um, INS Jalashwa has already reached India, Kochi. And also the second ship will begin from Maldives, bringing back stranded Indians today. Let us know more details. Uh, pretty, yes. The first leg of Samadra Setu have successfully finished. 698 stranded Indians. They have arrived at Cochin 
port today. Uh, the ship had arrived well in uh, well uh, in advance, uh, around uh, 30 40 minutes ahead of its scheduled time. And 600, out of the 698 passengers, 440 they belong to Kerala itself. And, and for other states, it's uh, Tamil Nadu, which has the largest share of the passengers. They have 187 uh, from Tamil Nadu. So, um, as you know, INS Jalashwa has more capacity, but still, um, adhering to the social distancing norm, only 698 passengers uh, were accommodated. And um, they have started disembarking as well. Uh, first, the priority passengers were uh, disembarked, and they include Dibyans and uh, pregnant women. And uh, as per the information passed yesterday, uh, the whole group will be divided into three batches. Uh, in, in terms of the screening and uh, other procedures. The first batch will be of those who have already exhibited some symptoms of uh, COVID during the travel itself, and uh, they will be shifted directly to the hospital, COVID uh, care hospitals, and ambulances were all lined up. And so far, no ambulance has started, indicating that maybe, we are not sure yet, but uh, it's a hopeful that there are no passengers showing um, COVID symptoms in the travel itself. And the second batch will be those who are screened and those who are found problematic. And they will be, uh, they will also be moved uh, to the COVID care hospitals. Uh, the, the third batch will be those who don't uh, exhibit any symptoms during the screening. And uh, the plan right now is those who are from Kerala, they will be moved uh, to institutional quarantines at their own districts. So the care staff will be best and um, other uh, facilities are already available here to move them to the respective district. And for other states, we have had to confirm, but still, indications are that they will be coordinated in coaching itself. All and, right, and, Ajay. And you, uh, some pregnant women and other special category people, they will have, they will undergo only home quarantine. This is to be noted. And they will be moved in uh, dedicated taxis arranged for them to their own home. That's pretty. All right, Ajay, so when we talk of the Vande Bharat mission, then uh, the Indians abroad will be brought back to the country via sea route and air route. Now, how challenging is it for the government on one hand, uh, bringing back the Indians, at the same time ensuring that uh, the Indians who come back on their soil, they are quarantined and uh, they do not prove to be a problem for the rest of the uh, uh, nation in the sense, as you're talking of the symptoms which are uh, being shown by some of the uh, people there uh, on the ship. Let us know more as to how do you evaluate how important is this uh, exercise of the government and how challenging is uh, everything put together for the government to execute uh, Vande Bharat mission? Uh, yes, really, absolutely. This, see, uh, NRA who wish to come back and as our Prime Minister Hinchel has declared earlier, we will not let them down at any point of time. We will take care of them. Hmm. But the issue will be whether uh, we will bring them back, but with adequate uh, precautionary measures. So that's why the quarantine system is systematically introduced. And uh, it may, you must be aware that Cochin is like a hub actually for, uh, for the port, for in terms of the international passengers via airport. So Cochin is the, that port or the hub that receives the maximum number of uh, passengers from abroad. And the, and the arrangement here provided by the district administration is simply flawless, I must say, because uh, they have done many mock drills before and they have executed it without any flow. And uh, it must be noted that uh, on Thursday, two uh, uh, flights have already come back from UAE and it, it should be noted because one passenger who arrived at Kochi and one passenger who arrived at Karitas, they tested positive for COVID. So things are not in what you call it. It should be taken completely with adequate precaution, everything. So it was right. only with the institution mechanism really uh, displaying its brilliance. Uh, will these patients be isolated and treated properly, preventing uh, outbreak into the society? So our arrangements are simply uh, brilliant. We must say our NRIs are being taken care of by our embassies, completely coordinated well with the respective governments there. And right. it, it, it's one of the missions ever that should be evaluated with greatest brilliance.
All right, Raja. Thank you so much for joining us with those inputs. That was our correspondent, Raja, joining us from Tiruvannathapuram, uh, getting us details on INS Jalashwa, which brought back uh, 698 Indians from Mali. And we'll keep you updated. India's massive evacuation mission, that is Vande Bharat, is in full swing to bring back Indians from abroad. The government continues to bring home the stranded nationals as Air India flights from London, Kuala Lumpur, Muscat and Kuwait brought back Indians from abroad under the Vande Bharat mission. A special flight carrying Indian nationals from London arrived at Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport in Mumbai last night. Flight from Muscat to Cochin landed with 177 passengers and four infants while a flight from Kuala Lumpur with 177 passengers and one infant landed at Trichy last night. Another flight from Kuwait to Hyderabad landed with 160 passengers. And more Indians are also scheduled to arrive from abroad later in the day today. A flight with 243 passengers will arrive from Singapore to Mumbai, while flights from Riyadh and London will land in Delhi. Other flights that will arrive today include Kuwait to Chennai, Kuala Lumpur to Cochin and Doha to Tiruvannathapuram. Meanwhile, the U.S. leg of the historic Vande Bharat mission started today from San Francisco. The first of the series of special Air India flights carrying over 200 Indian nationals took off from San Francisco. Around 2,000 Indians are likely to be repatriated through seven flights from the four cities in the first phase till May 15th. And according to the Indian Embassy officials, priority has been given to those Indian nationals who were laid off from work have medical emergencies or visa expiry issues, pregnant women, senior citizens, death in the family and students. 25,000 Indians stranded in the U.S. have expressed their interest in traveling back home through the special Air India flights. And Arun Shamnath is joining us from Tiruvannantham to get us more. Arun, we've given a broad outline of how Indians have uh, reached India from multiple locations, London, Muscat, uh, when we talk of other flights also, which are scheduled to uh, reach today. Let us know more as to what next uh, for uh, these uh, Indians who have uh, reached India. The next challenge at hand of the government would be to ensure uh, quarantine facilities for these Indians. Let us know more. Yes, Preeti, you're right. Uh, the whole process of bringing back Indians from where stranded in various countries back to India is turning out to be a huge challenge. Mind you, the situation is in Kerala is turning out to be quite delicate. We have had two to three days where there were no positive cases. and the past two days, we are getting one to two cases per day. And the situation is uh, complicated because two of the positive cases that we reported yesterday were actually returnees from the Gulf region. Now, that is the biggest challenge. To add to that is the problem of uh, Keralites from other states who are coming back to the state of Kerala. So while on the whole, Kerala has been successful in clamping down the spread of COVID, now the return of uh, um, uh, Keralites from other countries is turning out to be a challenge. However, so far the state has been quite successful in managing that too. The reason is that the state has a very meticulously, systematically laid out plan to bring back the whole uh, people from the airport to their places. Now, the whole process starts once they disembark at the airport. Now, these people are thoroughly scanned for symptoms. Now, we had an initial issue in the sense that much of the returnees were not actually, uh, they were just tested, but they were not scanned for uh, the symptoms of COVID-19. But however, that is being solved right now because the Indian, uh, com uh, Indian unit of um, med um, medical staff has already reached the Gulf country. So probably in the coming days, these people will be scanned for uh, COVID-19 symptoms rather than simply thermal checking. Now, once they disembark at the airport, Kerala has laid out a three-pronged strategy. At the first stage, these people will be scanned for symptoms of COVID. Those people with symptoms will immediately be moved to the nearest dedicated COVID-19 facility. The rest of the people who do not have symptoms will actually be moved to the institutional quarantine. Now, there will be no gaps or loopholes in the whole process. The institutional quarantine, uh, people in co these quarantine will be allocated based on the districts in which they hail from. And they will be accompanied by the police force. Now, once they reach the institutional quarantine, a whole mechanism of district administration, in including the health administration, is involved in the process of actually thoroughly checking them 
so that they do not fall into the positive category. And once these people complete the quarantine period, then they'll be checked and free to go to their homes. So as of now, the process is loophole free. Probably coming in the next few days, this can actually be strengthened up. Now, this is a serious issue for the state of Kerala because the whole process of bringing back care lights had even taken political overtones. So the, many of the parties were requesting these people to be brought back at the earliest. This is so serious because Kerala is one state which has one of the perhaps one of the largest immigrant population in the rest of the world. So this is actually turning out to be pretty serious. But so far as concerned, the situation is concerned, the state is pretty confident that it will be able to manage the large number of uh, expatriates who are coming back to Kerala in the coming days. Back to Preeti. All right, Arun. Thank you so much for joining us uh, with those inputs. That was our correspondent, Arun Shamna, joining us from Thiruvananthapuram, getting us uh, more on the procedure, thorough checking procedure, which will be followed after these Indians uh, reach India and also as we speak we've told you that uh, Vande Bharat mission is in progress and we'll keep you updated with the flights and uh, uh, the Indians who land on the soil. Up next Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gaba will hold a video conference with senior officials of all the states and union territories today at 11 a.m. Chief Secretaries and Principal Secretaries of Health from states will join the meeting on the issue of public health response to COVID-19 and implementation of MHA's guidelines. The meeting will also be attended by members of Niti Aayog, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Secretary, Ministry of Home Affairs, Secretary, Information and Broadcasting, and Member Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare will deploy central teams to 10 states that have witnessed or are witnessing high caseload and high spurt of the cases. The teams will assist the state health departments of respective states to facilitate management of COVID-19 outbreak. The teams are composed of a senior official from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, a joint secretary-level nodal officer and a public health expert. The team shall support the state health department in implementation of containment measures in the affected areas within the respective states, districts and cities. The teams are being sent to the following states and the states are Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Now this is besides the 20 central teams of public health experts who were earlier sent to the high case load districts. And up next, uh, let's check the latest data of COVID-19 across the country. And according to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, 62,939 total cases have been registered in India, including 41,472 active cases. 19,357 people have been cured and discharged from hospitals, while 2,109 people have lost their lives due to COVID-19. Maharashtra remains the worst affected state with 20,228 total confirmed cases followed by 7,796 confirmed cases in Gujarat, 6,542 cases in Delhi and 6,535 cases in Tamil Nadu. The National Disaster Management Authority has issued guidelines to the states regarding the reopening of closed industrial institutions during lockdown. The guidelines have been issued in view of Ishaka Patnam chemical leak incident. The states have been asked to maintain preparedness of the disaster management system. NDMA has instructed industries to take all necessary precautions. Industries have been advised not to fall for high target race. As soon as the factory starts, first trial or test run should be done properly. The guidelines have also mandated continuous testing of all devices under safety protocols. Moreover, employees should be made aware of the safety norms and if the industries face problems, they can see cooperation from the state and the administration.
and a piece of information is being circulating in social and print media that a special train to bring migrants of Uttarakhand back will run from today. However, PIB has totally rejected this claim. The news shown in the media is wrong and there is no such information and confirmation yet. ट्रेन के बारे में अभी जो मैसेज सर्कुलेट हुआ है सोशल मीडिया में भी और मीडिया में भी आया हुआ है जिसमें डेट लिखी हुई है कि 10 तारीख को इतनी ट्रेन चलेंगी 11 तारीख को इतनी ट्रेन चलेंगी वो न्यूज सही नहीं है अभी सिर्फ एक 11 तारीख को हमारे पास एक इंडिकेशन आया है कि बैंगलोर से ट्रेन चलेगी वो भी अभी एक इंडिकेशन है इसके अलावा अन्य किसी प्रदेश से और रेलवे की तरफ से अभी कोई इंडिकेशन नहीं है कि किस तारीख को हमारी ट्रेन चलेगी जब भी डेट तय होगी अगले 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 दो तीन दिन में या चार दिन में तब हम सूचित सभी को करेंगे कि किस तारीख को हमारी ट्रेन चल रही है Delhi police have denied the claims grounded on a story published in the National Daily stating that Delhi police crime branch has found an audio clip mentioned in police FIR against Marcus Nizamuddin head Maulana Saad Khandalvi PIB has busted this rumor and has termed it as fake And up next, we get you some good reports, some updates that inspire hope and positivity in these times of COVID-19. <music> Delhi police is robustly fighting coronavirus pandemic in the capital. Amidst the battle with the virus, several policemen have been infected and among them, one brain, brave policeman has died in the line of duty. Living all the troubles and pains, Delhi police is seen firmly standing with its civilians. In one such attempt of cheering people, Delhi police went on to celebrate the birthday of a 99-year-old elderly. Evidently, policemen visited the residence of the man and gave him a cheering birthday shout. All right, so we have the Corona Warriors there. Up next, we'll scan through the developments from across the globe in our segment, World Wrap. More than 40 lakh confirmed cases of coronavirus have been reported around the world, while the global COVID-19 death toll was nearing 28 lakh. As per the latest data, the global death toll stood at 2,79,303. The U.S. currently accounted for the highest number of coronavirus deaths in the world at 78,792, followed by the United Kingdom in the second place with 31,662 fatalities. The other countries with over 10,000 deaths are Italy, Spain, France and Brazil. And Spain's daily death toll from COVID-19 fell to its second lowest since mid-March on Saturday as half the country prepared to move to the next phase of the exit from one of Europe's strictest lockdowns. Spain will ease lockdown measures from Monday in a phased manner. Phase 1 will include a considerable easing of measures that will allow people to move around their province as well as to attend concerts and go to the theatres. Gathering of up to 10 people will be allowed. However, Madrid and Barcelona will remain under a lockdown as they do not currently meet the criteria for easing of the restrictions. And time now we get you words of wisdom from our doctors. Allaying all the fears regarding pandemic COVID-19, Dr. A.K. Agrawal, who is professor in the Department of Medicine at RML Hospital, outnumbered all other steps and suggested frequent hand washing and wearing masks as the only ways to stop the spread of the virus. Take a look. And if there is, a, you always wash your hand with the soap at the for 20 seconds, if the outside you are going and soap is not available, then use some good sanitizer which should contain the more than 60 percent alcohol. These are the basic precautions. With all these precautions, we can only check the spread of the infection. There is no other way. Yes, only through taking precautions you can keep yourself safe. On that note, we'll end this edition of Cracking COVID-19 here. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.